Ooh, I'm now live and Instagram is telling my followers that I'm live, but I wasn't planning to be live by myself. So hopefully Katie's there. Hello, Katie, Katie. And I could wave at you here, but did you get your, your invitation link? You requested to be in the live video. So now I'm going to view your request and I'm did that work, Katie? <laughs> It says going live with you, and I said yes. Hey! Oh my God, it did! Woohoo! <laughs> that hey. my face is like like weird. Hang on. <laughs> I put this back. There was a woman on the news yesterday. We were watching the news, and she was so close to the video camera. It was like hello. I was like Jesus, go step back. <laughs> Hi, Maya. I can see Maya's here. My little Maya is here. Can I wave at you, Maya? Nice to see you there. So Maya is going to, you can, <clears throat> can meet you, Katie, but you can't meet Maya. It's kind of weird. So we have quite a few people joining us live. This is so exciting. Hello, everybody. Hi, everybody. Hello. So this is me and Katie, and we are live today because we are offering a 33 days. I got it right this time, Katie. <laughs> yes, well <done>. <laughs> <laughs> of meditations every day over the December solstice window. So whether you are in the summer solstice or the winter solstice, mm -hmm. what's interesting about December, I just was doing the numbers there the other night. It's 21 of the 12th, 2021. <laughs> I know. It's like, talk about palindrome, right? It's crazy. That energy is potent. So what, what does that actually mean? Do you do, you do numerology? Numeral yes. I mean, in terms of, you know, one to one, which is you, know, you kind of break it down into chunks because of what it is. Uh, it's essentially about trying to, as the anchor in the light is so good because it's about trying to keep your vibe as high as it possibly can be and trying to keep as positive as you possibly can be because you're essentially manifesting whatever it is you're focusing on. So if you're focusing on the fear and the darkness and the scary ah, things, then you may find that, your life is not going the way you want it to. And I don't say that to frighten people. It's simply a case of saying that we have the power always to focus on what we want to focus on. We certainly do. And you know, the work that, that we do as light workers, working with light, if you would just imagine in a dark room, when you turn the light on, you get to see all the dust and all the clutter and everything that's there, just lying there. And that's what's happening now. And if mm. you go into that, going into the dirt and the debris and the dark, then that's what you're going to manifest. So Katie and I thought, well, how can we help as many people as possible remember what to focus on? And was it Esther Hicks that was doing work about manifesting that you don't need to spend that much time doing it, but you need to spend dedicated and 100% focused doing it? Yeah. So that's the idea of these um, offerings that we have. They're not going to take you 20 minutes every day, but if you can bring your whole self to them, when the email is going to come in from Katie or from me or from Katie and me, then, you know, if you put everything outside and just bring your focus to the work that we're offering, that'll help you get into the stream of bringing down more light and um, because the light that's coming through this December solstice is just so stunning and high frequency. I mean, I put my hand up. I have an agenda here. I want more light to come in. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Katie? I'm also aware, and I'm sure many people are feeling this already, because the energy for the winter solstice, as we know, Abby, is going to last the whole of December. Whoop de doo So I, and the, it's heavy. It's really heavy. And you find that a lot of people are going through a lot of challenges at the moment and it feels like we're already kind of the darkness is trying to like do its thing this darkness wants to do and so like i say it's that's why it's really important for us to do this because yeah. if you don't kind of take some control and try and like uplift yourself and ascend yourself to the light the darkness will try its best to work you and to pull you down into fear i think um Anyone who's ever done any healing work knows that the power of a group is amplified tenfold over the power of you on your own. Yeah. And so by connecting into other people with the same intention and you know, what was beautiful was, you know, I just told Katie what days I felt we needed to do it for. And then when she came back with 33, that's another numerology. Isn't yeah. Do you want to say what that one is? <laughs> 33 is all about the ascended masters. 
So I send the masses of people who lived here on earth or goddesses and stuff. So very, very, very ascended people, very high vibrational beings who went on and who ascended up into heaven, into the universe with the intention of helping humanity. And that is, it's like spirit guide plus, you know, they're here to help us all to ascend. And so when we see threes, any combination of threes, it shows that the ascended masses are here to support you and to encourage you and to guide you with whatever you're doing. So the fact that there's 33 days shows us that those ascended masters are here for it. They think it's a really good idea. They've They're given us their blessing. They're going to yeah. be with us all the way. So I think some of the work that Katie and I are going to offer will include holding space for people to connect deeper into the guides that are with them. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, to know that we, you know, the, the idea that we're separate and we're alone and we're like isolated is a lie. It's, it's a spiritual lie and it's not true. We always have guidance. We always have support. We always have backup. It's simply a case of just changing your own frequency to see that. Right. Yeah, and, and I think the reason why it's, it's so important right now is, is, again, as we were saying, that there's so much darkness there to throw you off course, which is why we're offering this for free. Yeah. And you might have seen it on my feed or on Katie's feed. And you can join. You can just join in any time. We're starting on Saturday. But we thought we'd do the live to see, you know, if anybody had any questions for us. And this will be saved then as a video. I think it's on my feed and then I could probably send it to you, Katie, and you could you yeah. can just put it up on your own. And then if there's any questions anyone has, just ask in the comments as well, because bringing people together is so important. And I think that's one of the things that has been happening recently is people are finding each other going, oh my God, I thought, you know, I can't be myself in front of my family, but I've met you mm. and we can talk and I can be more free to be who I am. And when you yeah. feel free to be who you are, then that's when more light, even more light comes in and you become a lighthouse. Oh, I love that. I love that. The lighthouse, rather than like chasing the light, you just stand strong in the light and know that the people who need you, who are, are drawn to you, they will find you. That's it. So we're creating lighthouses <laughs> and we're helping other lighthouses who might have dimmer lights brighten theirs. Because anyone, I mean, I was trying to figure this out. What do you think, Katie? How many people does one person have an impact on energetically? Wow, that's a big question. I, do you know what? Honestly, I would say, and I, you know, hands on heart, I don't have a number. What I will say is it's way more than we realize because of the ripple effect. So that you say, for example, like I, I, I coach people and I mentor people. And so I know that I'm directly helping those people. And I have a lot of followers on the gram. And so I'm helping those people. And that's great. But I also know that when you help somebody and uplift them and make them you know help them to be happier help empower them they will then naturally want to spread that and give that to the people around them who want to give it to the people around them like we never really know how just one act of kindness or one act of spreading that love energy can have a massive effect and go way further than we ever will we'll, ever, we'll never know because sadly we'll never know how far it goes but i think it's a pretty big one I'll tell you a story. I have a friend who wanted me to come into her apartment building and clear the energy in there. Now, she was living on her own, but it's one of these apartment buildings where there's loads of people living in the same building, right? So I went into her apartment and there was dark energy there. There was. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I talk about this kind of thing all the time on the podcast with Regina. Regina is the superb person of dealing with dark energies in these places. But I kind of know how to deal with it a bit myself. So I brought down light. And there were, in a set, there were ascended masters there with me and angels and they amplified that light. And it was like a bomb went off in her, in her little apartment and the whole energy of the building lifted. But what was really interesting and the reason why I'm saying this is, is uh, a week later or two weeks later, she sent me a message and she said, there are people on my street who I've never seen before and I've lived here for a year and they're all smiling and they're waving and saying hello to me and nobody has ever done that before. So if you could imagine a bomb going off in her apartment of light that ripples up and down the entire street mm -hmm. and up and down all the buildings. So somebody who brings in light, and I'm not saying this is a smaller scale, it's exactly the same scale. You bring in light for five minutes or 10 minutes in a day and it ripples out through you and it changes the room you're in, it changes the people in the rooms around you. 
Absolutely. And it lifts the energy up. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's really important. We have a question here. I don't know, can you see the comments? Yeah, I saw the question. It said, um, does it affect loving relationships, the energy that's going on? Absolutely. First of all, the energy of the, the darkness and the lower vibe energy. You may find that your relationships may be more challenging at this time. Uh, not that it's like doom and gloom and fear, but there'd just be more challenges coming up, right? And so <clears throat> by bringing in more light, and bringing in more love, then there is more potential for healing, there's more potential for conversation, there's more potential for hearing each other and sorting things out. Like I'm not saying that this is a magic wand, it's gonna make all of your problems better. What I am saying is that we have greater potential to get things to for our highest and greatest good. There you go, that's the best way of saying it, right? <laughs> well, I love that you said that because as you bring more light into the room and you see the dust and the dirt and the things, it can be rocky and difficult mm. to bring more life, light into a relationship because then you're gonna see more clearly some of the issues. But if both people in the relationship are willing to work on those, then the love is what perpetuates, the love yeah. is what grows stronger, and then you work together on the issues, and then they dissolve away because you've worked yeah. on them. Absolutely. But then if you don't currently have a partner, if you're single, and you raise your vibration, and your energy, you see, it's a, for me very much about embodying it, mm. which means you hold it in your body all the time. So it's not just doing it for five minutes a day. If you do it five, 10 minutes a day over, time something changes in you and you naturally raise and you hold yes. it so it's, it's, it's embodiment is holding that vibration but then the things you attract are of a higher vibration too so if you're looking for exactly. love mm -hmm. then you're going to attract in somebody different to who you would have attracted in if you were lower vibration exactly so. exactly you know we are <clears throat> mirrors of our of each other and we get reflected back where we are so if you're in the darkness if you're in the fear don't be surprised if the people around you in your life are reflecting that back at you. If you want, you have better relationships, healthier relationships, then it's your requirement, it's your responsibility to raise your vibration and that will then reflect, be reflected back at you as well. It will, it will. And it's, it's for me now, it's, it's like a vocation. You have mm -hmm. to be completely dedicated. You can't just do it on a Tuesday and expect <laughs> your life to change. <laughs> Although well, Tuesday does need more light. We did, we've established that. Yeah, Tuesday is a Tuesday, uh, you know, oh, it's Tuesday, right. I raised my vibration, you know, and then, <laughs> then you go off and do stuff that's going to lower it straight away. So it is, it's a vocation. It's, mm. And you know what's interesting is that a lot of people are afraid to do it. And they yes. have very good reasons to be afraid. Mm. And knowing that you're afraid is really important. Knowing that there's something yeah. in the way. Absolutely, absolutely. If you have fear, and we all have fear, okay? It's a natural part of being alive, okay? Fear is, the, it's there in our brain. Our brain actually has a natural pessimism, pes pessimistic bias, which is like really interesting. Um, yeah, well, we're wired to see all the risk. We're yeah, wired exactly, to see, you, exactly. you know, so that's, that's what it is. Yeah, but if you're actually like, what's the saying? <laughs> We're talking about not do, just doing it on a Tuesday and then having the fear yes. of doing the work, the fear yes. of raising yes. the vibration. Yes, that was it. Yeah. I, got, I got caught up. Anyway, what you resist persists. What you try and deny and push away, what you try and go, I'm not dealing with that, it's too scary, that grows <clears throat> in energy. It becomes more powerful, right? It dominates. So your shadow side, which is the kind of thing, people are terrified of their shadow because they worry what's in there. They worry that they're a bad person. They worry that, you know, the whole tower will come down. But actually, if you turn around and face it, what it really needs is love and healing, just like every other part of you. And when you call it into the light, you'll realize that your shadow is not this big, scary monster under the bed. It actually is just a part, another part of you that just needs the love. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I also talk about the difference between the shadow side and the dark side. Mm. And that the shadow is stuff that you can kind of see, but are kind of ignoring and it's kind yeah. of dancing there. And, and, you know, but then there's the darkness is let's imagine if you were like a house, the darkness is the basement where you've hidden everything and you just don't yeah. want to go there at all. And it's been there for so long, you might not even remember that it's there, but it's a weight. Absolutely. And it weighs you down. And anyone who's doing any, any frequency work, vibrational work, you can feel 
the mm. energetic weight of different people. I mean, you, if you ever met someone who's really small in stature, like a little petite person, but they're huge energy. Absolutely. Absolutely. They literally take up the whole room with their energy. They can do. Or you can meet some... The energy comes in the room like half an hour before they do. You're like, yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah, you can feel them. Or you can, you can meet someone who's really, really big, but they have an itty bitty tiny mm. energy field. And yeah. it's like, then you can find people who are very slim and they feel like they're heavy because the mm. energy around them is heavy. You know, whereas if you lightness of energy, lightness is, is to do with the amount of excavation of that that you've done. And we're all way more intuitive and in tune to that than we realize. We all oh, we've ever been. You, that every single person who's on this live and everybody who will watch this afterwards, you have met somebody who, for the first time, whether it's your friend's new partner or co-worker or whatever, and there's something about them that you do not like, and you don't know why. Like there's, there's, there's like there's no logical reason for you not to form that judgment on them, and that's because you're picking up their energy. You may not be fully conscious of it, but your body, your soul knows your energy is not vibing with their energy, and that's when like six months later they'll do some shady stuff, and you're like, see, I knew there was something <laughs> wrong with them. And it works the other way too. You know, if um, you're in a group of people who are targeting somebody and, you, you know, you fall into their beliefs about what that person's like, but deep down you go, hang on, maybe that's not what really happened. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And, and then going with your, with your intuition to go, no, there's something not right about this. Yeah. And then meeting that person and finding out what's going on and discovering that maybe they're just in trouble or mm. they, they have work that they have to do as well, but their heart's in the right place and they just haven't yeah. given a chance. Oh, that those things when you first meet somebody and you have an instant connection, like you just love that person from the get go, and it's because your energy vibes with each other. Yeah. Mm. So it's like an orchestra when they're all the, all the instruments are in tune. Yeah, that's just beautiful. It really is. And even if that person's like doesn't have to have like a long term relationship, not every connection has to be like forever. But it's just to connect with like minded people is so powerful in itself. It is. I think we're vibing pretty well here, Katie, you and me. <laughs> <laughs> well, we do. The only danger that you and I have, Abby, is that we, we, we chat. We talk a lot. I mean, it's, it's like when we, we set up this live, we were like, oh, my God, how long is this live going to be? Because you and I can talk and talk and talk and talk. <laughs> Does anybody else who's listening live have any questions for us about energy, about vibration, maybe about the light that's coming in? Or even questions on what you can do for yourself to raise your vibration. That could be a good question as well, if yeah, you have anything specific. Mm -hmm. Well, do you notice, Katie, as we're bringing that up, if your vibration falls? And then if you do notice it falls, what would you do to bring it up again? Um, my, one of my biggest things I feel, first of all, I have to kind of tune into my body and see what's really going on. I have really good now body self-awareness. And I always say my body is now a barometer. So where is their tightness where is their pain where is their restriction and where it is kind of gives me clues as to what's going on so if there's tightness like in my stomach i know that's like obviously that's my solar plexus my my sacral and my root so i'm going okay so why is there tightness there why why is there restriction there what is it about my life or what i'm doing or not doing that is showing up in my body right once we do that, then I'll seek to clear the energy, whether it's through, you know, a salt bath or an energy healing session or saging your body, you sage it and clear it that way. Um, and then obviously to raise the vibration back up, I always choose joy. I choose happy. I do something that makes me laugh, that makes me smile, because that is really high vibe stuff. And then by choosing joy, I know that whatever's going on, I can pull myself back up. For me personally as well, music is my thing. Yeah, I was going to say, so, I found myself singing today for the first time in a long time. I love that. <laughs> and then I heard my voice in the car and it just came out naturally and I wasn't even doing it deliberately. And I went, oh, I must be happy today. <laughs> <You know? clears throat> what do you do then, Abby, when you feel Well, I'm like... going to tie it into this question from Daily Practice, which is a lovely question. So thank you. What are your top three tips to raise positive vibes and energy? I don't do top three tips. I just give like millions of tips and then you can decide <laughs> which tips you like. Three really does. But what jumps out at me on this question is positive vibes. And for me, the most important thing is to not lie to yourself and pretend that you're happy when you're not. 
Yeah, toxic positivity is the and same. To, just yeah, as as, like being and to not to not just say, "Oh, love and light, love and light." I'll be grand. Let's get on with this. I know what I do is I acknowledge the feeling first, mm -hmm. and then I say, "Okay, I need to make some space to sit with this feeling, to go into it, to find out what it wants from me." Yeah. And, um, you know, that leads me into like Irish, the language of Irish. It's not, I am happy. I am sad. It's I'm with sadness. I'm with happiness. So separating yourself from the feeling really helps because then you don't identify as a sad person. You're just feeling sad in this moment. And <clears throat> again, you know, I was talking earlier about embodiment. When you can embody the fact that you are not your feelings, yeah. that you're just with your feelings mm -hmm. for the time that they're here then they don't knock you over the same as they would do because beneath the feelings or above the feelings or right through the center of your core is you and the feelings are like the weather and the clouds and you're the mountain. So I would say, okay, I have to be with what I'm with, but it doesn't have to consume me and it is not me. And I yeah. think that would be the most important thing to hold Absolutely. I mean, in your that, body. It's that thing, first of all, know that it's okay to not be okay. Oh, absolutely. Will, absolutely, 100%. We, we, if you judge yourself for being in a space of maybe you're angry or you're upset or you're sad or you're regretful or whatever, accept it. Say, I am sad and that is okay. I yeah, am you're someone, this life of mine, three, 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 good choice of numbers there, says I am with sadness. And you can be, you know, you say, I, I am feeling anger. Yeah. But I am not it. the anger. The anger is like a forest fire raging through mm -hmm. me. And emotions <laughs> themselves you don't are not... You do it. Emotions themselves are not good or bad. It's what we do with them. That's the important thing, right? Absolutely. So if you're angry or you're sad or you're whatever, it's, it's actually a message from your body for you to pay attention to something. Okay? So if you are sad, well, rather than judging yourself for being sad, you need to kind of have some awareness and objectivity where you go, okay, why am I sad? Now, obviously you would think that, well, if I'm sad, I'll know why I'm sad. But actually sometimes you're not just sad about that one thing. Sometimes actually if you start to explore it and investigate it and go really into it, you can find out that really there's an awful lot more going on inside than you, re you realize on the surface. I know, and then when you're comfortable, to be with the feeling you don't need to know necessarily why in that moment and it could be that you need to process it and as an energy healer and an empath you could be processing feelings for someone else who's not able to do that yeah and that's you know true. but but to be aware like i say i've been experiencing a lot of grief this year now grief mm. is different to sadness because grief yeah. is longer lasting so i suppose speaking of tarot cards grief would be like the majors and then the sadness would be the minors <laughs> so you have to learn to live with that and say okay well how can i look after myself mm. while i'm grieving and that raises your vibration immediately because you're not beating yourself up because you're not doing all the things you say you want to do absolutely so, I mean, so the top three tips would be first of all to acknowledge and to know that you are not the feeling and then to ask yourself well if how do i support myself mm. in this feeling and then the third thing would be don't be afraid to ask for help and say well today yeah. i'm not able i'm yeah, not able to support myself so i'm going to reach out to a friend or, you know, if it persists, as I'm saying, like the major arcane, it persists over time. If this is grief and it's persisting over time and it's not going and I've talked to all my friends and, you know, maybe to go and see a therapist or a healer mm -hmm. or get some healing, get yeah, you know, yeah. or, or do some spiritual work or spend time in nature. Absolutely. And Absolutely. not to see everything you're experiencing as having a quick fix. No, and I think that's the problem, though, isn't it? We live in a society that people want, instant gratification and they want a quick answer and they want it sorted like today and to realize that this stuff doesn't work like that you have it's a process and it's patience and it's showing up for yourself and it's being kind to yourself and honoring yourself and that those things take time and that's okay I always say that I just came off a coaching call and I said to the lady the time will pass anyway that's what time does it passes and so you can either keep pushing this away and then in a year's time, we're having the same conversation and I'm telling you the same stuff. Or you can say, actually, I need to really look, go into this and look at it and start to heal it and process it and accept it. 
and then start my healing journey so that I know in a year's time I'll be in a much better position than I am right now. And to pick up from there, from what we've just said, if you do it quickly over two weeks, <laughs> then you're going to have to go into the cycle of doing it again in a few months' time. Yeah. You say, okay, I'm going to go deep with this and I'm going to take six months to clear it. And I'm not going to push myself and I'm going to mm. let rise up in me anything that needs to rise up in me so I can really go deep and clear this. Yeah. Then Absolutely. even though it feels like you're going deep down in your vibration and you're getting heavy and what you're actually doing is like a deep clean mm. so that you never have to go that deeply down again. Mm. And that's Absolutely. an investment of yes. your time. Absolutely. We're all holding on to way more stuff than we realize. It's like if you cleared out your closet today and you would, I swear to God, you would go, oh, I forgot about that. Oh, oh that's where that was. I've been looking for that for ages, right? We all do that. I didn't even know I had half this stuff. And that's the same as what you're carrying in your system, in your energy, in your body. You are holding on to way more stuff than you realize. And you may not fully appreciate that until you start to really go there. Oh, yeah, that's funny. I did that this morning and I'm looking at this top and going, no, I'm not going to wear this. And I put it back in the wardrobe and then I started pretending I was my husband. And I say, yeah, but why are you keeping it if you're not going to wear? He was in the room at the time. He thought this was hilarious. And I said back to him as I'm having this conversation with myself, I said, oh, well, I might want to wear it next week. So I can't get rid of it now because but I don't want to wear it today. And there's a lot of stuff that we're holding on to just in case. A lot of sentiment, a lot of things that we actually yeah. don't need. Oh, God, yeah, absolutely. Especially... It, it feels like a risk, doesn't it, to travel lightly in life. Yeah, but it's actually it being light. Mm -hmm. I see fantastic. a question here. Sorry, I see a question about a latest call up a relationship. It's heavy on me. How can I raise vibration and feel better? I mean, the first thing to say about that, from my point of view, is we see we link the word grief to death right understandably actually i think when a relationship breaks down even if it's your choice and you're the one that's made that choice you're still in grief and yes. you still have to go through the grief stages you still have to find a way to heal it and process it and to learn the lessons and to accept it and that takes time and one of the big things for me having gone through these things in my own life is a lot of self-care a lot of self-love a lot of um taking it one step at a time. I know that sounds cliche, but things are cliche for a reason, it's because they work. And you don't have to be, again, that thing, don't be in a rush. Don't be in a rush to kind of go, okay, how am I gonna feel better? I wanna feel better now. Or how, I wanna meet someone else, I wanna meet someone better now. No, you have to allow yourself to just be right now. That's the most important thing. I think as well, uh, to realize that it's your inner child part that's disappointed yeah. and that's the most upset. And if you, as the adult, has called off this relationship, you have all your reasons why you don't want to be in that relationship anymore. The little child part in you will say, but remember all these great things and, you know, getting that feeling and maybe we should go back. So if you, again, separate out all of the parts of you and imagine your inner child, a little girl that just wants to be loved and you mm -hmm. say to her, I will love you properly. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And we'll get through this. Mm. and I'll protect you, and I will never abandon you, and we will never let this happen to us again. Yeah. And you take that time, and you get help if you need to get help, and you, you know, and, and you as the adults having a duty of care to all of the aspects of you is really, really a superb experience. Yeah. To come and, out of it stronger. And make sure you're forgiving yourself for, for your part in the what happened, because what happened has happened, and you can't change it. Um, you can learn from it. And you, for carrying around unforgiveness i always say this it's like carrying a wardrobe on your back it's going to get really heavy it's going to weigh down it's going to be uncomfortable it's going to stop you moving forward you have to put the wardrobe down because the only person you're really hurting is you it's like drinking poison every day you have to find a way to forgive yourself you made the best decision you could at the time with where you were and who you were and now you know better you do better but you have to part of the huge process is to forgive yourself and to forgive them, you know, obviously the relationship was not meant to be. It doesn't mean, you know, even if they've done really bad stuff and hurt you, you still can't carry around all of that anger and pain constantly because it's just going to talk about lowering your vibration. But you know what really helps people with that is knowing, you know, that you're talking about cliches work. Here's one that doesn't work. Forgive and forget. 
That does not work. Yeah. Okay. I, I think and when people I mean, see forgiveness, <laughs> they feel like, well, we have to forget and, and just move on and get on. And that's like mm -hmm. fake positivity. That doesn't work yeah. for me at all. Yeah. So you can forgive the person and forgive yourself, but you don't forget what happened and you make sure that it never happens again. Yeah. And you say that to your inner child, the one that was hurt the most. Yeah. And you Absolutely. say, if I see this coming, and usually these things don't just happen. Usually no. there's flags and you ignore them and a the flag and you ignore it. And you say, okay, well, I see a flag next time. I'm not going to ignore it. Yeah, absolutely. And no, there's no justification or excuse for someone to hurt you. There's none. None. I don't care what that person's been through. We've all been through pain. We've all been through trauma. It doesn't necessarily mean you have to hurt other people. But if you don't, what's that saying? If you don't, heal what cut you your bleed on people didn't hurt you something like that I can't oh there's that. another one okay <laughs> <laughs> it's true. you know if you don't find a way to heal it and process it you're going to then take it out on other people who didn't do anything to you yeah yeah, yeah. definitely this, this stuff is not easy but we can do hard things because bones are says i mean we can do this stuff we just have to keep showing up for ourselves you know you know, I think, and thank you, Robert, for saying we're both awesome. I, I'm sure we both appreciate that. <laughs> we do. <laughs> but it goes, kind of goes with me because I don't want to like sit with that. But there's another thing that we can do to raise our vibration is to actually accept and receive a compliment. Mm. Oh, God. And I, I have to stop and do that because, you know, it can be difficult sometimes. If you imagine a compliment is high vibrational energy. So this guy, Robert, right, has just thrown us a couple of balls of massively high vibration energy, right? And it would be doing him a disservice if we didn't accept them. Exactly. I accept so. you, my darling. I know I'm a queen. And I don't, you know, thank you for just confirming that for me. <laughs> 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 but that's the fear that's the fear and i'm grow growing up and living in little catholic ireland where you're not allowed to put your hand up and say you're good at things you know be told that you're good to actually absorb it and say well i know that i'm good at something mm -hmm. and so when you accept yourself in your wholeness for who you are you must accept those parts of you that are good at something and to be able to say i'm not afraid to stand up and step up and say i'm good at this it's really about accepting your divinity right because if we, you know, whether, whatever you believe, whatever your faith and religion or what, whatever, if you have faith and then you're believing that you are part of the creator, the creator created you, then you have divinity within you. And so by you finding a way to push it away, it's almost like you're struggling to accept that within yourself. So maybe that's something that you need to look at. You know what you've just said there? Mm -hmm. leads us really nicely back into the work that we're doing over the next 33 See, days because when you're you. when you're struggling with accepting the parts of you that are good that are beautiful that are light that are powerful and then you join something with us it's like bring down more light it's like oh i don't know if i really want to do that because that's just going to bring it really up to the front or i don't know if i can i don't, I don't know, know if, if i can i'm good enough or i i'm capable enough or i'm enough you know, like if you doubt yourself, but fear, fear is a massive block. Fear is like, I, you're just pushing it all the way. You're kind of creating walls around yourself and to actually go, okay, I may not fully trust this or I may not fully believe in this, but I do know that I have nothing to lose by giving it a try. Absolutely. And you, you know, and you don't, you don't have anything to lose. All you I mean, I'm reading here what like Robert, that. Robert John has just said, he's been feeling really low the last few days and he's trying to raise his own vibration. But I just want to point out to Robert or to anybody else who's watching this, that you, you, Robert, you actually just sent us a really high vibrational ball of light. Mm -hmm. So it's possible that you've separated yourself from the higher vibrational aspect of yeah. you, your divine self, because and I'm not saying this to be facetious or to belittle it, but you're wallowing in the heavier energies. Now, mm. wallowing like, 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 you know, sounds like a derogatory statement, but we have a tendency to just slide into it and stay there. Mm, don't we just? So who, if anybody is listening who's feeling that they are stuck in this heavy energies, let's do an exercise now. And it'll be a really good example of the kind of things that we're going to offer over the 33 days. And again, for people who are listening or watching this, you have the choice to do this as deeply and as strongly as you're able to do. So, yeah. you know, as opposed to getting blasted down with a shower and cleaning off all the muck, or you could say, okay, I'll just lightly dust down some of it because I don't want the shock of, of being standing there and being completely clear. You have to pick. <laughs> <laughs> 
I like that. It's like, don't kind of get into your head about it. Don't judge yourself and think, I have to be a perfection to do this. No, you just have to be open. That's all we ask. And go from the feeling. Go from how you're feeling. Yeah. So you can even imagine, do you know the way a dog comes out and it's wet, it just shakes off the water, off its all of its fur. What are, you know, people who are watching this, there's one that you could do. Just say, okay, I'm shaking off all the heaviness. Yeah. And just so imagine true. the ripples in the energy field and shaking your body and going, okay, I'm just going to release it. And then I'm going to be with what the issues are and be with the feelings as opposed to identifying myself as those mm. feelings. Yeah. I mean, the, the good thing about it is saying, rather than saying like, for example, I am fat, well, because that then lowers your vibration and kind of lowers your energy. You say, no, I have fat, right? And we all do because it's part and parcel of being alive. It, it's sort of detaching yourself from that lower vibe energy. So when you're sad, you don't say, I am sad. You say, I have sadness. It's funny why people never say, I am here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, so, I'm sure Chewbacca does from Star Wars. I'm sure he's oh, like, We all have hair. We have fat. <laughs> we have eyes. I am eyes. I, I, I am fingernails. You know, it doesn't work for that. You know, it's no. really bad. It's always the negative stuff as well, right? It's always the lower stuff. Apart from like, I am happy. We can accept that. I am happy. But, but, then, anyway, yeah. but then to know that, okay, you can get too attached to being happy. Then when you're not happy, there's a disappointment in yourself that you didn't mm -hmm. hold on to it. Isn't that the truth? Absolutely. We judge ourselves so harshly and it's so unnecessary. But look, we're living in 2021 on planet Earth. We're not going to always be super happy all the time. And that's okay. Accept it. Deal with it. Process it. Heal it. Let it go. Oh, well, that's it. That's why we're here, guys. If you came down to Earth to have your happy life, <laughs> there's no learning. Oh, you got that one wrong. <laughs> you got it wrong. And a friend of mine calls it Earth School. And mm. it's like, right, what are we going to learn today? And it's not going to school to learn. It's this, the, uh, the energies, the environment, the universe conspiring to Absolutely. teach us what we need to learn. Absolutely. And know that some days, even on this 33-day thing that we're doing some days you are going to be on it you're going to be open you're going to be here for it you're going to be really positive and ready to show up and other days you won't and i'm telling you that's not just you that's me and abby as well some days oh thanks like, very oh. much <laughs> that's true because we're, we're, we're true. well that's why i asked you for help i didn't yeah. want to have to do this all myself and i felt yeah. you know right now as well it might be interesting for people to hear about the light worker relay race which is something I think is just a fabulous concept. You know, today I'm bringing in loads of light and then tomorrow Katie will bring light down so I can take a break. And then it's, yeah. it's, it's Robert's turn. And then, you know, it's someone else's turn and everybody's taking turns to do it. And um, that's why we have to work together. Yeah, absolutely. And know that healers need healing too. That no matter where you are on that spectrum of healing, um, doesn't mean that you somehow are like superman or wonder woman and that you don't need any support we all like we all go through things doesn't matter how high vibe you are you're still living on planet earth so we um, all need yeah support. and we're all going through things now because the amount of darkness and fear and and and, and evil that's being exposed and the yeah. world is not the place we thought it was and there's a lot of grief yeah absolutely and a lot of shock and again that's still healing and processing i actually saw someone i can't remember who said that we're all going to be suffering as a collective as a humanity from ptsd for years to come from what we've experienced over the last two years oh well i'm going to opt out of that because i choose not to <laughs> <laughs> of course i would expect nothing less i'll be honestly i, I, I know i'm telling you that we're going back to manifestation you know mm. what are you going to create and so this is a perfect example if you're going to step into the solstice <laughs> energies and decide we're all going to have ptsd for the rest of our lives you know then we are yeah. except we is going to be you not you personally because that's what you're deciding don't give that to me Abby. that's just me no well we're not going to and that's why we come into community because then we can talk and make sense of these things and see how powerful we are and how it actually impacts our day-to-day -day life yeah absolutely absolutely and to know that you are in control of your life you are in control of your thoughts you are in control of your energy you are in control of your destiny but you have to see that and believe it right you do. And I think in order to be aware that you're in control of all these things, you have to take all that dirt off you mm. because we're surrounded by other people's thoughts and you could be thinking other people's thoughts. So you could be feeling I'm in control of my thoughts and you could be, be making decisions based on thoughts that are around you that actually are not your thoughts. Mm. Absolutely. So, Especially with social media, just be aware, be aware of your social media. One of the best things I did 
um, was give myself a clear out so that anybody who was of a lower vibration, I either unfollowed them, unfriended them, or I hid their posts because I needed, especially at, at that time when I did it, I needed to really lift my vibration. And I realized that all of the messages I was reading or the posts I was seeing were not helping me to do that. So you ha again, you have that power and you have your, your energy is your most valuable thing and you have to look after it. You certainly do. You mm. do. So, so we wrap this up now because we've been talking for about 40 minutes. Flip a flopper, yes, absolutely. <laughs> but what we're going to do is we will leave the link when, when I post this video up, we'll put the link to sign up, and it's free. Yes, it's really totally free. free. There's no and many catches, there's no like, we're not trying to catch you out. This is totally free. It's our gift to you all, and we hope that you can join us because it's going to be a beautiful, powerful, wonderful thing. Absolutely. I mean, I, I'm always very transparent in saying I do have an agenda for this. My agenda is to get as many people as possible focusing on light mm. for the days where the most light is coming in. Yeah. And um, because that's, that's when you have your vocation as a light worker to light up the lighthouses that everybody has the potential to be. And when you know, Katie, that we have people joining us from all around the world, not mm. just from the UK, not just from Ireland, but got people from America, people from Canada, Australia, people from India, all around. And if you just imagine for a moment, all those little lighthouses lighting up, then growing bigger and bigger and bigger and anchoring in all that light into mm. the world. Mm. That's why we're doing it. That's beautiful. why we're doing it. Yeah, absolutely. It's beautiful. So I'm here for it. I'm excited. I can't wait to get going. <laughs> well, you'll have to wait. So it's a start till Saturday. But I those know. of you who sign up now, we, we have a, an offering from each of us that you can do one straight away. And you can even just being in silence and being with your feelings, separating them from you and saying, OK, this one, I don't need to feel you for a while and I can just sit here and not feel anything and, and mm. even just for a moment gives you a moment of peace. Exactly, exactly. So yeah, if you haven't signed up already, I highly encourage you to do so. It's gonna be a wonderful thing, it really is. So thank you so much, Katie, and we've done our Instagram Live together, Yay! so we know it works. We can do it again. <laughs> yeah, it's cool, I enjoyed it. And uh, thank you to everybody who showed up and listened to us waffling on. <laughs> we don't yeah, and if you really, if you liked our conversation, you could check out Healing for Healers, the latest podcast is me and Katie waffling on again. So. Yeah, we do that. We're very good. I think it's because it's obviously the, the Irish and I'm originally from Liverpool. So I think it's I the Irish. We have a lot to say. Connection. <laughs> All right, and do do leave a comment in the you know below if you had a question that we didn't get to, or if you have anything, and me and Katie yeah. will hop on and, and we'll answer, and we'll keep it going, keep it alive, and Absolutely. you know, as, as 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 mucky as social media can be, it's also beautiful when we connect like this, and we can exactly. just come in and focus on the light and the good stuff, and then leave again. It's like being a stealth bomber. You bomb in, you come and see what you want to see, and then you leave, and nobody even knows you were there. It's great. Exactly, exactly. It's like the radar. I like it, right? So how do I turn this thing off? <laughs> um, well, my, I've got an X in the top right-hand corner. Do you not have one? I have an X, too. I'm I think we can press, press the X. Okay, I'll yeah, press yeah. the X. It will see what happens. Okay, yeah. bye. bye.